Don Don Don. One of the most popular characters in the Pokemon anime. Don is undoubtedly a fan favorite, an icon, a legend. Everybody loves Don. I literally don't know anyone who dislikes her. Well, except maybe Ursula. Now I'm excited to talk about the history of one of my favorite characters in the anime. The fun, the hurt, the struggles, the success, and everything in between. Buckle up your seatbelts and there's no need to worry, because we're now taking a trip down memory lane and revisiting Don's phenomenal story in the Pokemon anime. The first episode of the Diamond and Pearl series begins by introducing Don, a 10 year old kid who is ready to start her adventure in the Pokemon world. Her dream is to become a top coordinator just like her mother Joanna. It's interesting how just like Ash, Don already knows what she wants to be even before her journey begins. Don's agenda for the day is to meet up with Professor Rowan to obtain her starter Pokemon, Turtwig, Chimchar, or Piplup. Don fantasizes herself with these cute Pokemon on the contest stage, which also reminds me of Ash doing a similar thing right before he began his journey. Joanna tells Don that in order to become a top coordinator, she must first be a good Pokemon trainer and a good Pokemon breeder. It's almost as if she is foreshadowing Don traveling with a good Pokemon trainer in Ash and a good Pokemon breeder in Brock. Soon after, Don leaves for Sandgym Town after her mom gives her a medium sized backpack instead of this huge luggage to carry everything she needs on her journey. Joanna also gives Don the very first contest ribbon she ever won as a good luck charm. Don bids her mom goodbye with her most iconic phrase. Don initially gets lost but eventually bumps into Professor Rowan who takes her to his lab. Unfortunately, the lab is a mess and Chimchar and Piplup run away into the forest. Don volunteers to go find her potential starter Pokemon which allows her to get her first taste of what it's like to be a Pokemon trainer. When Piplup is trapped and is about to get attacked by an Ariados, she smartly baits the Ariados to free Piplup and the other Pokemon. But when a horde of Ariados attacks him again, Piplup defends Don with his bite attack as they work together to escape. Before going back to the lab, Don and Piplup pass by Lake Verity where they experience a strange phenomenon, as it seems like a mysterious Pokemon just appeared in front of them. When it's time to officially choose her starter Pokemon, Don obviously chooses Piplup and she officially begins traveling around Sinnoh. Not long after setting off on her journey, she encounters this injured Pikachu whom we know is Ash's Pikachu. And just like with Misty and May, Don's bike is also electrocuted by the electric mouse. After dealing with Team Rocket, Don decides to bring Pikachu to Pokemon Center and find its trainer. Eventually, Fate brings Don and Pikachu to Ash, who happens to be with Brock, and the three of them travel together for the entire series. On the road far from home, Don comes across a bunch of interesting rivals, starting with Nando, a trainer who aims to compete in both Pokemon Contest and the Gym Challenge, as well as Zoe, who's going to be her main rival throughout Sinnoh. In Don's first ever contest, she and Zoe quickly become friends, as Zoe helps Don prepare for the contest. Zoe utters, see you in the finals, right before taking the stage, could this be foreshadowing? Don gives a naturally impressive show with Piplup for the performance stage, and unsurprisingly, she, Zoe, Jessalina, and even Ash all advance to the battle stage. Don makes her way to the top 4 with Dubuneri, who she just cut a few episodes earlier. And at one point when Zoe learns that Ash only joined this contest because Apom wants to, she randomly suggests Don to raise Apom instead. Interesting. Don goes on to lose to Zoe in the semifinals after putting up a good fight. They may not have met in the finals for now, but maybe they will someday. In Don's next contest, she reunites with her childhood friend and now contest rival Kenny. They have a friendly dynamic, but they often like to tease each other. Kenny likes to call her Dee Dee, which annoys Don. I wonder why. Oh! Kenny started Pokemon as a Primplup, who instantly forms a rivalry with Don's Piplup. And as expected, Don and Kenny meet up in the finals, where Piplup narrowly beats his evolution, winning Don her first ribbon. Moving on, Don adds Weasel to her team and continues to train hard for her upcoming contests. However, in the Harum contest, Don fails to even make it past the performance stage, despite the good performance given by Piplup and Pachirisu, who she caught a few episodes ago. This loss has led Don to kind of a sad state. But Zoe's comforting words, plus having the upcoming Heart Home tag battle to look forward to, have allowed Don to cheer up a little bit. In the tag battle, Don is paired with Creepy Conway, and for some reason they managed to work together successfully, going all the way to the finals before losing to Ash and Paul. A few days later, the gang is just having a normal training day, with Ash polishing his battle tactics with Chimchar and Apom, as Don and Buiza are trying to perfect their contest moves versus Zoe and Glamiao. Here it is evident that Apom seems to be more captivated in contest battles, while Buiza looks more interested in classic battles. So as per Zoe's idea, Ash and Don trade their Apom and Buizo, putting the needs and wants of their Pokemon before their own. In the Celestion contest, Don faces another hard loss as she again fails to get past the performance stage. And it's very clear that something is wrong with the way she presents her Pokemon. This puts Don in the most impressive state of all of her time throughout the anime, as she questions if she really is meant to be a Pokemon coordinator. In Veilstone City, Don forms a connection with the gym leader Maylene, as both trainers can fight to each other about their struggles and their respective endeavors. But after having an official gym battle against Maylene, Don begins to cope with her problems and reignites her confidence. Conversations with Zoe and Wallace also help Don get back on track in Pokemon contests. They perfectly point out that Don should first and foremost ensure that her Pokemon shine on stage, instead of being too flashy by showing too much of their moves. Additionally, Don should focus more on strengthening her bond with their Pokemon and bringing out their most natural selves. And now comes the Wallace Cup, arguably one of the best arcs in the entire Pokemon anime, period. 
Not only is this a fun and exciting chapter in the series, but this arc also pivots Don's narrative to a positive direction. Don, Zoe, Jessalina, and Ash are all participating in this contest. And to make things even better, Mei is here as well. So right before the tournament, Mei and Don bond over their level of food, contests, and battles, and they successfully win their tag battle in the 7 star restaurant. During the tournament, Don and Ambipama give an amazing performance as they finally end their flopping streak and make it past the performance stage. In the battle stage, Don manages to snag win after win after win, even managing to defeat Kyle, the coordinator who beat Ash in the previous round. Don makes it all the way to the finals where she faces Mei, a very experienced coordinator and the one who just defeated Zoe in the semifinals. It is the closest battle we got so far in the series, and by a slim margin, Don and Pippa defeat Mei and Glaceon after an intensely gorgeous battle. Don finally gets out of her slump era, and more importantly, she and her Pokemon are now totally in sync in the contest field. This win not only gives Don the momentum for her upcoming contest, but also proves that she has earned her spot as a new female protagonist of the show. It's kind of like a passing of the torch from Mei to Don, but in the contest arena. From there, it only gets better for Don's story, because in her very next contest, Don battles Lila, the coordinator who ended her mom's winning streak back in the day. After quitting contests to become a Pokemon stylist, Lila decides to make a comeback on the contest stage to win her fifth ribbon after learning that her friend's daughter is participating. They battle in a dazzling 1v1 between Ambipom and Delcati, which results in Ambipom's win, giving Don her third ribbon and technically avenging her mom's loss to this talented coordinator. Then in the Chocovine contest, Don encounters Ursula, another Pokemon coordinator who happens to be bitter about Don for winning the Wallace Cup. She isn't the only one, sister. She thinks that Don won just by pure luck, so it's the start of a pretty hostile but wildly entertaining rivalry. Their rivalry is settled in the battle stage, ending in Don's Pachirisu edging out Ursula's Gabite despite the massive disadvantage. Ursula copes by saying that Don just won because of their timer, but that's three contest wins in a row for Don. Only one more to go and she's going to be qualified for the Sinnoh Grand Festival. Don's character has continued to progress throughout the DP saga. She adds Swineup and Cyndaquil to her team, but then Swineup goes on to become Charizard 2.0 as it quickly evolves all the way to Mammal Swine in a span of 22 episodes, causing it to start disobeying its trainer. Mammal Swine's disobedience even affects Don's contest performances. In the battle versus James who's dressed as Jessalina, Mammal Swine runs amok causing Don to lose the battle in a very humiliating way. But all's well that ends well because starting that episode, Mammal Swine has fully obeyed Don and trusted her as its trainer. Alright, now let's talk about something I know many of you are waiting for, Don's Ambipom. In the contest just before Mammal Swine outrages the stage, Don battles Kenny again, this time with Ambipom vs Primplup. It's actually a pretty good battle, but Ambipom gets slaughtered in less than 4 minutes. What a shame. This plus the contest with Mammal Swine is another double losing streak for Don, but now that she's more mature trainer, she has learned to deal with her losses with grace and an optimistic attitude. Back to the battle with Kenny, the real highlight of that is actually the ping pong portion of the battle. Here we can see Abipom being really skilled at ping pong as its two gigantic tails bounce Primplup's bubble beam back and forth. So in the next episode, Don and Abipom join a Pokemon ping pong tournament to check out Abipom's skills in ping pong. They make it all the way to the semifinals where Abipom shows that it is capable of soloing the defending champion Mr. O and his Shiftry. Don and Abipom eventually lose the battle due to exhaustion, but Mr. O finds great potential in Abipom to be a world class Pokemon for ping pong. So he offers to train Abipom and help her become the best ping pong player in the world. Surely this is a fake out, right? Ever since the Advanced Generation Saga, Ambipom has already set her eyes on Pokemon contests. She followed Ash to Sinnoh, got traded to Dawn in order to do what she really likes. Surely, Ambipom was truly meant to be in the Grand Festival Finale, right? So it was just like Zoe said, right Apom? You and Dawn are meant to end up at the Grand Festival! Uh -huh. Right? What could have been the best written Pokemon in the entire Pokemon anime drops everything down the drain and decides to do ping pong. What a sad and frustrating end to Ambipom's incredible multi-generational story. If Zoe learns about this, I know she's gonna be mad. And Don knows this because she never mentions Ambipom again in front of Zoe. Okay, that's too much for any of us to handle, so let's just talk about another ending that's actually awesome and well-written. Mesprit, the very Pokemon that Don and Piplum saw during their first day of adventure, has formed a powerful bond with Don. It's as if there's some invisible string of fate that ties Don and Mesprit together ever since her journey began. In the Team Galactic finale arc, Mesprit is able to telepathically communicate with Don as they and the gang freed the Alga and Palkia and thwart all of Team Galactic's plans to create a new world. Soon after, Don enters a Daybreak contest where as soon as she sees Ursula's plus one Minan, Don starts to freak out and cover her head in embarrassment. But why? It is here where she reveals her traumatizing experience with plus one Minan. As a kindergartner, she, Kenny, and their other friend Leona are tasked to be Pokemon caretakers in their classroom that had plus one Minan. She was trying to calm down the plus one Minan, but instead she makes them feel uncomfortable, causing them to let out a good amount of electricity. This makes Don's hair look like this, sparkle the diamonds or dandruff. This makes Kenny give her the nickname Diamond Dandruff, or DD for short. Diamond dandruff, huh? I don't want diamond dandruff! The entire class led by Kenny all made fun of Don for her electrified hair, which made her feel super embarrassed. Now we know why Don hates the nickname Dee Dee so much. 
But Ursula overhears Don's conversation with Ash and Brock, and so when they meet in the finals, Ursula makes sure that she uses Plus or Minin versus Don. At one point, Plus or Minin indirectly activate Diamond Drop on both Don and Mamoswine, which is all they need in order to perfect their Flame Ice combo and turn the battle around to win their fifth and final ribbon, and Don is also no longer embarrassed of her Diamond Dandruff hair. Now that Don has five ribbons under her belt, she can finally enter the Sinnoh Grand Festival, but just before that, her doppelganger Princess Salvia bestows her a Togekiss. After they did the classic switcheroo where Princess Salvia dresses up as Don, and she and Togekiss win a Pokemon contest. Since Togekiss is someone who seems to have a bright future Pokemon contest, then Don should be the best trainer to raise her. Don accepts the offer and brings Togekiss along with Cyndaquil, Mamoswine, Pachirisu, Buneri, and Piplup to the long-awaited Sinnoh Grand Festival. Basically, all of her Pokemon except... Everybody's at the Sinnoh Grand Festival. Don, Zoe, Kenny, Ursula, Nando, and Jessalina have all earned five ribbons. In the performance stage, we get to see loads of different spectacular performances. For Don, Buneri, and Cyndaquil create this fun frozen roller coaster, ending in the most beautiful display of a frozen Pokeball top with fiery wings. This majestic performance easily advances down to the battle stage, where the 32 finalists battle it out to become the top coordinator. RIP Kenny though. In the first round, Don faces Ursula, who's improved so much since they last battled. Ursula is dominating most of the battle, but for some reason the point system freezes, giving Don the opportunity to deliver a come from behind win with her signature combo of Ice Chandelier. Ursula used to say that Don always benefited from the timer running out, but the beauty of this battle is that Don beats Ursula by fainting her Pokemon, showing that it's actually skill, not luck, that wins on her battles. Don proceeds to steamroll through the top 16, top 8, and even top 4 of the Sinnoh Grand Festival, where she faces and defeats Jessalina. Suddenly, Don is now in the finals of the Sinnoh Grand Festival, where she faces her main rival, Zoe, who just beat Nando in the semifinals. Don and Zoe have fulfilled their promise together, which is to battle each other in the Grand Finals, but sadly, only one of them can become the top coordinator. Don's Piplup and Togekiss take the spotlight as the curtains open up for Zoe's Glamion Gallade. In what is arguably the most intense contest battle in the Pokemon anime, both parties give it their all with their dynamic combinations and quick responses to their opponent's attacks. The climax of this battle takes place up in the air and both coordinators are judged pretty evenly, but after a series of back and forth attacks and counter attacks, Zoe barely outscores Don, making Zoe this year's top coordinator. As for Dawn, it's actually very impressive that she managed to make it all the way to the finals of her Grand Festival, especially when compared to Mei's stats in the previous generation. I'm pretty sure we can all agree that Dawn's story in the DP Saga is rich, intricate, and well-written. But what really puts her above all the other Ash companions is the way her story progresses alongside Ash's. Despite starting much later in her adventure, Dawn quickly catches up to Ash in terms of skill and attitude in their respective careers. After the Grand Festival, Kenny asks Dawn if she can come with him and if they can travel together on their next journey. Don declines his offer as she is keen on cheering for Ash in his upcoming Sinnoh League battles. And to be honest, Ash Ketchum wouldn't have been successful in the Diamond and Pearl series if it wasn't for Don. You see, Don was responsible for coming up with many of Ash's battle strategies, such as the Spin Dodge, Ice Aqua Jet, and the ever iconic Counter Shield. Don and Ash are always on the same wavelength, and their sibling dynamic is second to none, especially when it's complemented by Pikachu and Piplup's sibling dynamic. Not only that, but her interactions with Brock are wholesome too. She treats him like a big brother and often takes his wise advice in many aspects of her life. At the end of the DP Saga, Don returns her Lucky Ribbon that Joanna gave her at the beginning of her journey, showing that she's now an independent trainer who can hold her own. Don is then planning to go with Ash and Brock to Kanto, but when Buneri is called to do some modeling stuff, Don knows that she has to prioritize her Pokemon's career. After calming down Piplup, who threw a tantrum because of their inevitable goodbye, Don, Ash, and Brock spend their final day together watching Flynn's battle for Cynthia as she reiterates her dream of becoming a top coordinator. And after that, Don parts ways with Ash and Brock, ending in her and Ash doing their signature high five. That's soon followed by Ash comforting her in her own words by saying, No need to worry. Don! No need to worry! <laughs> you guys take good care! And there's really no need to worry for Don fans. No, not the Pokemon, but the fans of Don, as she returns to the Pokemon anime in the following series, appearing in nine consecutive episodes. In Best Wishes, she spent some time staying at Cynthia's villa and meeting up with Ash, Iris, and Silent. Don Cyndaquil is also revealed to have evolved into Quilava, and we get a very nice scene of everyone's Pokemon bonding together. Don participates in the Pokemon World Tournament Cup Junior Cup Tournament Tournament of the World, where she places 8th after she and Mamoswine are defeated by Iris and Dragonite. What's interesting is that Don battles everyone in this arc. She battles Silent right in the beginning, then Iris in the Junior Cup, and then she battles Ash in the final episode of this arc, showing us how much she and Quilava have grown during their time away from Ash. Don soon heads to Blackthorn City, but at least Piplup has made a lifelong friendship with Oshawott. Next, we are again blessed with Don's multiple appearances in Pokemon Journeys. She's revealed to be competing in Sinnoh Contests again after having already competed in Hoenn, Johto, and Unova. I wonder if she's already a top coordinator. My guess is no. Here, Don tends to an injured Cresselia and helps solve the sleep deprivation problem caused by Darkrai. Later, Don returns again in the Space Time 2 part where warps leading to another dimension suddenly appear in various parts of Sinnoh. Don calls Ash, informing him that Piplup went missing. Turns out an alternate version of Dawn is responsible for taking her Piplup because this girl's Piplup and all of the Pokemon of the alternative world have turned into eggs. 
And so, Real World Dawn and Alternate World Dawn, who's a runner-up in the Sinnoh League, work together alongside Ash, Go, Chloe, and their alternate forms to solve the space-time cataclysm. When all of their Pokémon evolved back to being eggs and they all get reverted back to children, all they could do is say a prayer, and Pokémon God Arceus miraculously brings everything back to normal. In the Arceus Chronicles 4-parter, Dawn rejoins with Ash and Go as they participate in a Pokémon catching event organized by Cynthia as part of the Sinnoh Festival, where they talk about Sinnoh's past, aka the Hisui region. Don temporarily catches an Oshawa, which is a nice capture since we know that Piplup has a history with a certain Oshawa. And when Sinnoh is threatened to be destroyed by a gigantic flaming Heatran, Don reunites with her trusty Mesprit and they work together with Ash, Go, and Brock to stop the evil plans of Team Galactic to summon Cyrus. Finally, Don shows up with Chloe to watch and cheer for Ash in his battle against Leon in the Masters 8. Seriously, out of all of Ash's former companions, she is the only one to be physically present to cheer him on in the grandest battle of his life. No doubt she is one of Ash Ketchum's true best friends. Here she witnesses champion Leon utilize her patented, copyrighted counter shield tactic against Ash. Of course, you all know she previously watched Ash vs Cynthia, where Ash and Pikachu use counter shield against Cynthia and Spirit Tomb. Dawn is present until the award ceremony of the Masters 8, very proud of what her bestie has accomplished. And we all know Ash would never have made it here without Dawn, his truest of friends. And that is the end of Dawn's story in the Pokemon anime. She is undoubtedly the best written companion in her own series. Dawn is really that Pokemon character. She received amazing character development in Diamond and Pearl. She's got really awesome skills in Pokemon contests and battling, and she's very entertaining, often cracking some funny one-liners and creating fun dynamics with the rest of the cast. Her interactions with characters like Barry and Paul will never be forgotten. Paul! Hmm? Have you seen Ash or Brock anywhere? Not you too. Pardon me for living. Bye. Let's go. Dawn's presence always brightens up the mood, successfully living up to her Japanese name, Hikari, which means light. Overall, Dawn is one of the most three-dimensional and well-rounded characters in the entirety of the anime. No doubt she remains to be one of the most popular characters in the show. Thank you all so much for voting Dawn in the last poll. So if you want your favorite character to be featured next, make sure to like and subscribe so you can be notified for the upcoming poll. Thank you so much for watching the video, but as always, it's been your boy Luap, and I'm out. Peace.